Have you ever wondered what it really takes to stand out as a designer? And perhaps what are the secrets to a fulfilling design career? Stick around to find out what are the key things that separate a good designer from a great one. Hey everyone, I'm Rupin from Jammed and I'm excited to share with you some of the valuable insights I learned along the way on my journey as a UI UX designer. I've divided this video into four key pillars to help you thrive in the design industry, whether you're just starting out or looking to advance in your career. On this channel, design is jammed into the minute. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the channel for more similar content. And before we get started, I want to clarify that this video focuses more on the design approach and philosophy that can guide you on your path rather than a step-by-step -step laid out plan. If that's what you're looking for, this video might not be for you. The way I'm going to be structuring the pillars is I'm going to have a bunch of key points under each pillar with a clear action plan to improve on that pillar. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into pillar number one, and it's the pillar of mindset. Once you decide you want to become a designer, I would say the first point that you need to be aware of or be conscious of is that you're going to embrace lifelong learning. So what I mean by this is that there is no clear finish line. There is no end goal in design. You will always be trying to improve yourself. It's almost as if you're going to the gym. You know how they say the moment you start going to the gym is the moment you're forever small. So that's the same thing as the designer. And it's a little bit unhealthy, but that's the nature of the job. There is no clear finish line, unlike other more stable careers with like a clear step-by-step -step laid out plan. So there is no clear ladder to keep climbing or like a clear staircase into design you just sort of find your way there the main thing you want to have is just being open to criticism in general as a designer you kind of want to kill that fear of failure seek out opportunities that push you outside of your comfort zone and that will in return give you a lot of potential for personal and professional growth be proactive about your career and what I mean by that is you want to actually have sort of a goal, an end goal for yourself, which is a little bit hard to define. So what I said by there is no finish line, you sort of want to know what you actually want to do with design. Are you learning design to work at an agency? Are you learning design to teach it perhaps at some point? Are you learning design perhaps because you enjoy it and use it as a form of self-expression? So these are all end goals. So. It can shift. It's okay that it can shift, but also be a little bit more focused about it and be proactive about your career. Value growth over perfection. A lot of us tend to focus a lot on details, especially if you're a designer and take a lot of interest in design and aesthetics and all of that good stuff. You will find yourself circling around over and over around very minute details that most people don't really pay attention to. Done is better than perfect. I believe and it helps you like on that path in general so you want to adopt a mindset of doing things and being productive with your time for number two i i call this key point humble confidence you need to have a nice mix of being a confident person while also remaining humble with your work and why it's natural for a lot of artists and designers in general to keep having a constant battle feeling the best thing in the world and then feeling like a complete imposter and that's why imposter syndrome is very common among designers it's nice to maintain a balance of being confident in your abilities knowing what you're strong at knowing what you're not the best at but also know that there's always someone who's better than you so that you remain at a level at which you're confident enough but not too overly confident so that you always strive to be better so that's ultimately the goal is to stay humble enough to know that there's still too much to learn in design. Design is a never ending field and that's a great thing about it, but that also can be quite overwhelming for some people. So what you would do is you would just have to consistently test yourself, maybe perhaps get feedback from people that let you know what you're good at and also what you're not the best at so that you can slightly improve it and just advance further in your personal and professional development. Number three under mindset and it's being adaptable be adaptable trends tools ai all of that stuff they always come and go with time but the founding principles are still there and they remain strong tools are great to help you produce the work but do not rely on them overly do not overly rely on this one thing such as ai and all of that stuff to like complete your work be independent from it a little bit but also 
do not like get attached to this one tool otherwise your work would not be complete and all of that because things change be flexible enough to adapt to multiple different circumstances or situations that you'll be put in naturally as designers you will have to adapt to different scenarios and like different users different people that you're working with different clients so having more of an open approach or like an open mentality to like grasp new things and learn new things is always valuable and your employer most specifically will value that a lot about you what's a nice action plan to enhance your pillar of mindset clarify your core motivation when you're getting into design start by asking yourself why you're doing things and know what's your end goal it doesn't have to be something very concrete but at least move in a direction step number two i would say is to conduct regular honest self-assessments of your strengths uh areas of improvement and all of that good stuff it helps you keep a grounded perspective and also helps you identify potentials of improvement and now we move on into pillar number two and this one i believe is quite important to nail down as a designer and it's the pillar of craftsmanship acknowledge the value of aesthetics in design design recently has turned a lot more into just being a problem solving approach and designers i believe are starting to forget the great deal of aesthetics and what role it plays in a good design so i would say acknowledge that there is still value to aesthetics and strive for a level of greatness in the aesthetic department as much as you are striving for a great problem solving mentality or approach these two go hand in hand and it's why design exists now because there is a nice dynamic that happens when you combine beauty with problem solving you have design and that's what i believe our roles as designers are another point about aesthetics is i believe that aesthetics give you a clear point or a clear advantage over somebody who doesn't really work with great aesthetics and all of that simply because in the job market people don't really have a lot of time to look at things that you're doing unless they catch their attention and how do you catch the attention it's usually through a great cover photo through a great case study that has great visuals so they all tie in together you, you want to have a balanced perspective on all of that and still strive to create something that looks great key point number two and it's to copy great work from great designers that you aspire to be like and i'm not saying copy by like just straight on copying and like doing everything in plagiarism no i don't mean that i mean you, if you don't know what you're doing just look at what other people who know what they're doing are doing and then copy some bits from them and put it in your own work it's like you're adopting a new style of work into your workflow so it's not really stealing per se but you're learning the foundational principles just learn the foundational principles and then when you learned the copying part you can go ahead and do your own thing so there is a great deal of details that you miss just by looking at something next time you look at something and you believe is simple and you can copy it i guarantee you if you try to sit down and copy it like really sit down and copy it you'll see the great amount of details that you miss like the tracking between the text the sizing and how things are sized together there is a lot of thought that goes into great work so i would say have a consistent practice of just looking at things on a daily basis and trying to reverse engineer it so you ultimately also want to focus on the quality in your work because i also think that good work must come before working at a good job i don't think you would get a good job if you don't have good work to begin with unless in very rare circumstances some people get those but that's not the norm the norm is you need to sell yourself and to sell yourself you need to have good work that basically presents you in a way that you are capable of this role key point number three and it's to have a clear focus starting out in design you might find yourself quite distracted you might like to do some logos you might like to do some videos you might like to do some banners you might like to do a little bit of everything because it's all shiny it's all exciting we all strive like from a personality perspective we all strive on like new experience and we like just acting as a sponge and that all is cool it's all cool in the start when you're just starting out to figure out what it is that you like but ultimately you want to have depth of knowledge into one to two fields that you are really really good at and confident in and that's something you enjoy doing and it has enough room for you to grow and it doesn't really bore you so find that one field in the many fields of design that you enjoy and specialize in it 
Also, you want to master your tools well enough so that you stop thinking about them and think more about the design part. That's part of the craftsmanship part is to know your tool well enough so that when you come to actually design, you're not really thinking about how to cast a drop shadow in this application. Key point number four, and it's to have meaningful work, something that means something to you. Create authentic work that actually does mean something to you. Maybe it's for a cause that you believe in. Maybe it's for a certain type of group of people that you're designing it for, but have something more authentic in your portfolio. Have a more wider range. We've seen a lot of food ordering apps and yes, that's a lot of the work that you're going to be doing in most of the companies anyway, but getting into the companies first, you need to have a little bit of an authentic touch to yourself a little bit as well. So consistently just acknowledge when you're just following trends for trends and the thing about it is cookie cutter approaches give you cookie cutter results. And if you want to stand out as a designer, you kind of have to carve your own path a little bit. This whole key point just revolves around developing your personal taste and finding your voice in the design community. Point number five, and it's to seek a mentor. So a good mentor will basically hold you accountable for your career. They will help you develop your inner designer in a way. They will help you, they will help you avoid mistakes that they've done. There is never an instance in which you like share your work with somebody who is a little bit more senior than you and then you get worse results. More likely, you're just going to broaden your perspective on design and have a more well-rounded view of the designs that you're doing and yourself as well because there is a feedback loop occurring and that's ultimately what you want as a designer. So what's the action plan for developing your craftsmanship pillar? Three things, document and learn from great designs, develop a consistent routine, of just going in daily and checking and keeping your eyes fresh to develop your own personal taste. Number two, aim to specialize, pick one field and just go ahead and master it. Like daily, just strive to improve on it, stay consistent with it, get feedback on it and all of that. And that leads nicely into point number three and is to find a mentor or at least a group of people or a community that you share your work with. If you don't know where to start, I would say you can just join any community that has a lot of like good designers or just find any designer just any designer go onto their website and submit a form telling them hey i would appreciate if you can give me five minute review or like if i can have five minutes of your time just like giving giving me your opinion on the work that i'm doing and that's i think the best way to keep growing as a designer pillar number three and it's the pillar of communication to start off based on my experience Around 3% of your job really just consists of having great soft skills, being a good speaker, being a good person that knows how to communicate their ideas. Your presentation skills, they matter greatly when it comes to having a pitch, you're pitching something to a client, you're talking to a client and like you're explaining the reasoning behind what you're doing. So it takes a lot of just doing a lot of presentations, putting yourself out there for failure and like learning from them. So you will have to know the types of clients that you're dealing with, how to adapt your tonality to like fit the mood that you're in right now. You just want to be a pleasant person to work with at your workplace, you know? Just a well-rounded, nice individual that's there with a positive mindset. Point number two, and it's getting the right feedback. It is your accountability to guide the feedback sessions from your peers, from the clients, to focus on what you want them to focus on. So if you're working on something and you want to get feedback on it, it's best to like guide the attention of people who are going to give you the feedback in a way that's productive for everyone. You don't want to keep getting wrong feedback on the wrong things, on things that are still unfinished or in progress. So it's best to like give an introduction on the things that you want to get feedback on. And absolutely be ready to defend your ideas and embrace debates. So that is something to know about when debating with other people that design is not really an absolute black and white field. There, it's just a matter of shades of grays and how one thing or one small change impacts the overall thing. So if somebody comes so sure of what they're saying, you might want to question that a little bit. Point number three, and it's do not hide from conflict. Shape the career you want for yourself. Be assertive about your goals and your personal development and be proactive to like improve and step up in your design career. 
action plans to improve your communication. Develop your soft skills, start guiding your feedback sessions, and be more assertive about your career goals. Now we move on to pillar number four and the last pillar in this video, and it's called the pillar of community. It's all about how you impact the community as a whole. So in this pillar, we discuss mainly your position within the design community or your local design group. Key points. Number one, network and collaborate. So attend local design events and meetups. Go meet people that are within your field doing the same job. Don't really shy away from sharing your work. Have a social media platform. Maybe have your website and like share it with other people. It ultimately all ends up as a net positive for you and it helps you create more genuine connections. People are more likely to remember you if you actually show up to places and show them your things rather than if they didn't see you online. Regarding the collaboration part, believe me when I tell you, every single designer has their unique fingerprint in the way that they do their work. You are more likely to learn if you just collaborate with other people than to work alone. You'll be stuck in your ways a little bit when you keep working on your own compared to just like trying to work with other designers. Everyone has something unique about them that's interesting in the way they work and they will teach you a lot of invaluable lessons. Number two, develop a medium for your work. It's the same point that ties to networking and collaboration a little bit. So you don't want to shy away from like showing your work and your work basically doesn't exist in a vacuum. You ultimately want to develop a feedback loop that helps you grow. So find a medium, whether it's your website, whether you have a YouTube channel, whether you have an Instagram or Twitter or all of that and put put in like some work in progress as well. People like to see those as well. So generally you just want to be unisolated. And the third and final key point, and I believe that's the pinnacle, is to start giving back to your community. Help other starting designers. And I believe the best teachers are those who are also the best students of life. Try helping out other starting designers. The ability to teach or like convey an idea in a simple way to other starting designers puts you in a student's shoe. And that helps you get down to the meats of the topic. That helps you understand the concept fully, both for yourself and like the person you're explaining it to. So it's always nice to help out other starting designers and put yourself in their place and conduct workshops. For instance, let's say that you're some, something you're proficient at. Why not just go out there and make a workshop, see what's gonna happen from there. Also, you can just become a thought leader. Why not just create a Twitter and keep posting your thoughts about design. And over time, people will just like start retweeting your stuff and believing what you're saying and all of that. So that's also another direction you can go into. So what's the action plan for the community pillar? So start by attending one design event. It's a simple thing, right? Just take the step to go out there and attend a local design event and practice your soft skills there. Number two, brush the dust off your portfolio or your social media account and get back to posting and develop a feedback cycle. Number three, conduct a workshop at something you're proficient in. It could be anything. Maybe you're good at making icons or you understand how to use colors very nicely in a design that's harmonious. Make something about that. It doesn't need to be something really great and over the top, but just take the step. The first step is always the thing that matters the most. So that was pretty much it for the pillars that I believe make you a better designer overall. Which pillars are you actually going to work on next? Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or thoughts regarding the topic. And if you have any video suggestions or topics you want me to talk about, please also leave them down below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe for more similar content. I appreciate you sticking around and see you again in the next video.